Man, I was getting ready to talk to you t this morning and going over what I wanted to say, and I had so much. I, mean, I can really get going when I get started. So I was trying to think of just a couple of things to share with you all. And um, just thinking about my experiences in college and talking with my friends, my family, and um, fellow students about what I do and kind of the reactions that I've gotten. Um, but I started out, you know, with my dad, I'd go to seminars when I was young, and I was always a part of the ministry, but I always thought, yeah, this is cool, but, you know, I don't really see how it applies to me, you know, spiritual warfare, deliverance, it's important, but you go, dad, I'll hang out in the back, I'm good, <laughs> but um, that all changed when I turned 16. I was at a birthday party, and one of my best friends was there, and she had been a strong Christian her whole life. But in the past year, we lived in different states, so I didn't see her that much. In the past year, she had turned her back on God, walked away, and gotten in involved in some pretty dark stuff. And so when I saw her and talked with her, I knew something was up. And she didn't tell me right away. But that night we were talking and we prayed together. And she recommitted her life back to the Lord. And she made a change in her life. And of course, the devil didn't like that. And so the next day, Tess and I, Tess is one of the teenage exorcists, um, we were with her. And she was acting really strange. And you, have you ever had that where you can just feel the spiritual warfare going on? You can just sense that turmoil. You can see that evil. Just, it just, it was so angry that she dedicated her life back to the Lord. And so Tess and I sat down and prayed with her. And we were just, you know, going to pray a little prayer. Lord, please come be with us now. Take care of this. And then all of a sudden, this deep voice looked me dead in the eyes and said, she belongs to me. You can't have her. And Tess and I just sat there going, oh my gosh, what do we do now? Because at least we, we knew what demons were, and we kind of knew some of the things about how to deal with it. But I had never before in my life had to face down the devil. And I will never forget looking in her eyes and not seeing my friend, but seeing a demon. And I'm sure many of you can relate, look, looking into that, the face of evil. There's nothing, you can't even describe it. And so... You know, Tess and I, we did our best to try and figure out what to do. I had my dad on the phone. I was having him tell me what to say, and I was trying to help her. And um, she, we did get, we were able to cast out a demon, actually. And then she went back home, and dad met up with her and helped out. But that really, that made me realize that spiritual warfare isn't just for exorcists. It's for all of us. Every Christian should know how to do spiritual warfare. They should know how to pray spiritual warfare prayers. They should know how to stand up to the devil because you never know when you're going to have to face down evil like that and you don't want to be unprepared. Thank God that my dad was there and was able to help. That lit a fire under me because I realized that this is for everyone, that we can all make a difference. We can all stand up to the devil and that we don't have to just sit by and take whatever he dishes out. And so we started training Tess, Savannah, and I with my dad. And we worked, we worked every week. We were working with people. And it's, it's difficult. It's, there's so many different aspects of it that we had to learn about. And um, so we kept training. And then finally, um, this newspaper heard about what we were doing. It was, it was in London. I think it was Fabulous magazine. I'm not sure. But... They said, wow, this is really weird. This is really cool. You've got three young 16-year-old girls learning how to cast out demons. And so they came and talked to us. And you know, I've had a lot of people say to me, well, why do you, why do, you do this in front of the camera? Why do you talk to the uh, magazines? Why do you um, shoot um, documentaries? Isn't that sensationalizing it? Um, this should be done behind closed doors. But that's not how Jesus did it. Jesus did it right out in the open. He did it so that other people could see and so that they could be helped. And if I wouldn't take a stand for something that I believed in, for something that I knew to be true, who would? Right? Who would, who would take a stand if I didn't? And so... You know, it has been hard. We've had a lot of amazing articles, and we've met a lot of amazing people. 
But we've also taken a lot of flack for what we do. I'll never forget one of the big deciding moments was, um, you've probably heard about it, the Anderson Cooper show where they brought us on. And we had just really gotten started and there was a live audience with probably an entire auditorium twice the size, just full of people. And we come out on stage, we were excited to talk about Jesus and what he was doing in our lives. And wow, we got roasted. And um, for example, whenever they'd say something negative about us, they would have prompters telling the people to clap and cheer whenever, whenever they said anything nasty. And so it was just, it was tough because not only was our faith ridiculed, but I mean, our, our mental faculties were questioned, our motives, and it, we were called frauds. It was a big hit. And then I had to go home and all my friends saw that on TV. And that was hard. But one thing that I've really learned in this ministry, and if you're ever fighting against evil, is that if you're doing something good, if you're doing something that's making a difference, the devil is going to fight back. And that's a good sign. It means you're making a difference. It means you're, ma you're doing something. So I just want to encourage you, if you're fighting and it just seems you're, you keep getting hit, that he's keep, he keeps going after you, it means you're doing something right. It means that you're taking a stand for Jesus and the devil doesn't like it. But that's where you want to be. You want to be in the middle of God's will, regardless of what the enemy's trying to do to take you off that course. And so we, we went through all that. We had a lot of great experiences. We got to travel to uh, London and Ukraine and Russia. And um, we had a BBC documentary that got filmed there. But another thing that really struck me was a lot of people, I mean, this is an exception. You guys are an exception. For, but most people, even Christians, know nothing about the devil. They know nothing about spiritual warfare. And they don't know what kind of doors they're opening to the devil. And so I'll tell you some more stories about some of the travels but, um, and some of the amazing things I've seen. But one thing that really struck, out me, struck me was um, I went to college for two years at a Christian university. And one of my friends, who's a strong Christian, uh, we were talking about um, some of the books and movies and, and things that we were doing, and she mentioned watching this show that had really questionable material. I mean, spiritual material, sexual material. I mean, it was just, you name it, it was crossing that line. And I said, how can you watch that, being a Christian and knowing what you do? What, why? And she goes, oh, I just don't feel convicted about it. And that, that reminded me that in today's society, our conscience can get dulled. We can get, we get desensitized to the evil around us. And we don't even realize, we'll get so numb that we'll see great evil. We'll go to a movie and watch terrible things with a terrible message. We'll go and hang out with friends and do stupid stuff. And we don't even realize what we're doing because we're so numbed out. Our conscience is so numbed out that we don't even realize the doors that we're opening to the devil. And he uses that. And so that's my passion with, with coming and talking to you all today is to tell you the devil's clever. You know, our God is mighty and he is powerful, but he also has a powerful enemy. And he will, he's, he's clever. He's not, if you're walking down a road and you see this path that's all, it's, it's got scary signs, it's uneven, it's creepy, are you going to go down that path? Of course not. And the devil knows that. So he's going he's gonna to use different uh, ways to get that door open into your life so that he can take more and more ground. And so that's why as Christians, we need to be aware. And so that's why um, when a publisher approached me about two years ago, I actually stopped and thought about it for a minute because honestly, you know, my dad's a writer. And I am a big reader, love reading, total book nerd and science nerd. But um, I always said, because I'd see him writing, I'd see mom helping him, and I'd always go, oh my gosh, never, I would never do that in a million years. And um, yeah, there was just one thing I was always like, ah, I don't like writing, I'd never do it, no thanks. That wouldn't, wouldn't even be on my radar. And have you ever done that where you've gone, okay, God, I'll do anything but this, and then what do you have to do? That one thing, right? Um, so yeah, so this, this publisher came to me and he said, I want your perspective because you've been able to travel, you've been able to 
and talk to your peers, you've been able to learn a lot about the enemy and the supernatural. And I want you to write about the draw of the supernatural. Because, yes, God created us as supernatural beings, but, you know, God has that aspect, and it's good. You know, praying to him, the Holy Spirit, worship, angels, this is, this is all good that he created. He created us as supernatural, a part of us as supernatural. But at the same time, what is the devil going to do? He's going to see that good, and he's going to try and twist it. And so then he brings in the dark side of the supernatural. And my, the publisher wanted me to write about that because with all the experiences I've had and been able, being able to minister to so many people, I've seen what the devil can do with seemingly innocuous things. And so I sat down to write this book and I was really praying because it was really difficult. I'm just not a writer, but um, I really put my heart and my soul into this because I want people my age to be able to see what the devil's doing now in their lives instead of waiting 20, 30 years and getting their lives all messed up and then being desperate for help. I don't want to, to get to that point. I don't want to have to get to the point where dad's sitting across from you trying to pick up the pieces of your life. I want to stop it before it gets that far. And so that's why I wrote this book. Um, it's called The Dark Side of the Supernatural. And, and, you know, I, I talk about how there is that pull to the supernatural and how there's a good side to it and there's a, a bad side to it and how to distinguish between the two, how to discern, use your God-given discernment and strengthen it so that you're not caught unawares by the enemy, so that you can stand up for your faith. And, um, you know, I talk about some of the experiences, some of the struggles, and um, I also talk about, you know, how to evaluate the media in your life, because I think that's a big area where the devil can just sneak in there and you don't even see it. How to evaluate what you're reading, what you're thinking about, the music you're listening, to really take a step back and go, this is coming into my mind. What is, what, what's being fed into my mind? Is this good? Is this of God? You know, one of the hardest things for me to see is some of my friends wasting their lives, going out and partying and getting drunk. I've, and I've seen that happen. Instead of trying to maybe help somebody else or learn about, get closer to the Lord or do anything besides going out and getting drunk at a party. It's, it's frustrating because you, we all see the pain out in today's world. We see the evil. I bet every one of you has seen real evil in your lives. And so I wrote this book to encourage you to take a stand against it because if, if you don't do it, who is? And, um, so yeah, so that's, that's my big passion. And just one more thing, a, a lot of my Christian friends thought, and they've told me this to my face, I don't believe in what you do. I think when you become a Christian and you turn your life over to God, everything's okay and you can't have a demon. They've said that to me multiple times. And, and they'll look me dead in the eye and say that. And it's, okay, um, I have experience that can say otherwise, but, what, okay, and we all know that's not true though, right? We know that you can't just say a little prayer and make everything go away. You know, I, I, um, I want to be a doctor, and so right now I'm working in an ER. I'm still an undergrad, and I love science. And so, you know, if someone has, if they've smoked for 30 years, your lungs are going to be real gunked up, right? And uh, I've seen a lot of people who come in and they have chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and that they, they, their lungs are just, I've seen x-rays, just full of crap. But if they've been smoking for 30 years and then they stopped a couple years ago and then they come into the doctor and they're like, oh my gosh, I can't breathe. I'm coughing all the time. You got to help me. Why isn't this working? I quit smoking. But you spent 30 years smoking. You spent 30 years accumulating all that gunk in your life. And it's not going to magically be stopped just because you quit smoking. And that's the same way with deliverance. You have to get free from the things that you've done in your life. I wish it was a simple prayer that you could pray and then everything would be okay. But it's not like that. If you've been involved in witchcraft, if you've... Um, if you've been in adultery, if you've done anything that the devil could have taken to use in your life, you need to renounce that. Because if you don't get rid of that, it's going to be there. 
No matter how good of a Christian you are, no matter how many prayers you pray, you're still going to have that evil in your life because you allowed it in. And until you renounce that and get help for it, it's going to be there. Amen. And it's going to get you. It can get you when you're down. It can get you when you're doing great. You know, I've seen a lot of people, they've been doing great for like 50 years, and then all of a sudden, boom, the devil destroys them because he just let them get complacent and let it go along and let that gunk build up till all of a sudden, wham, he can get you. And so, you know, I'd encourage you, start now. Even if you haven't done anything in your life, just just you know, start learning more about spiritual warfare. Make sure that the devil doesn't get into your life. If you have done things in your life, if you have opened up the door to the devil, you need to start pushing back and gaining that lost ground. Start getting rid of the gunk in your life. And don't just think that a simple prayer is going to fix it. You might need counseling. You might need deliverance. You might need to go and make amends with the people that you've hurt. But you need to do something about it because as Christians, we can't have that gunk in our lives because we've got a target on our back and the devil wants us. We can't give any ground to the devil, to the enemy. And so I just want to encourage you all to, um, to, to really think about this and think about where the devil could have an opening in your life. Forget that, forget that you're a Christian. Forget that you're, you're good and you go to church and you pray. Think about where he could have that stronghold that could take you down and start fighting against it and praying against it. You've got an amazing church here that can help you with that. And that is an amazing gift.